Good evening, guys. And um, victory last night against Norwich. Very, very professional performance. Really good first half. Could have been three, four, five goals to the good. Second half, we dropped off a little bit. Um, allowed them to come in, give away a bit of a soft sort of penalty, um, which was uh, one where VAR got correct. And um, Norwich kind of put a little bit of pressure on. And it was a little bit squeaky bum time towards the end um, where we should never really been in that situation, but we was. Uh, but uh, Kai Havertz obviously finished off the game 3-1, comfortable three points. And, you know, the world was watching last night, let's have it right. They all wanted us to fail. Uh, all the doom and gloom merchants, which is the mainstream media. Uh, vultures, absolute rats looking for stories, looking to add to our woes and uh, put the fear of God in the Chelsea supporters and spread the, the, the poison news out there that we could be in big, big trouble. We could go to the wall, we could go bust. Um, we're going to lose this player, that player. They seem hell-bent on trying to do everything possible. Maybe put the squeeze on Nike to end their contract with us um, like supposedly free have although I did notice yesterday we I was half expecting us to come out in a, a kit without the uh, the actual official logo but the three logo was on on the shirts so that information was absolute nonsense uh, but no listen both men and women played last night and both men and women came through the game um, with three points each, 4-1 for the ladies, 3-1 for the men, and business as usual. And you have to say, there were some really good performances out there. Great to see Mason Mount. I like the way uh, he went over the Chelsea supporters, peeled off, patting the badge. You know, it was a real statement there, basically saying, yeah, look, you know what, we're, we're with Chelsea, we're all in this together. And, um, and fair play to the Chelsea supporters who sang Roman Abramovich's name, not for a minute, silence or applause, but just in gratification for all that he has done for us as an owner. And we won't change our opinion on that mainstream media. You can call us pathetic, you can call it embarrassing, which I noticed all the mainstream have turned around and said, and they said that the Norwich fans booed back to the Chelsea fans because they couldn't believe what they were hearing, you know, absolute nonsense. But um, what we're hearing today, of course, it's another day in the life of Chelsea, uh, just on the chart in here. Roman Abramovich, this is from the BBC, the good old BBC, Minister of Propaganda. Roman Abramovich, Chelsea fans urged to stop chanting the name of the owner. Chelsea supporters have been urged to stop chanting in support of the club's owner, Roman Abramovich. Fans sang Abramovich's name during Chelsea's win at Norwich on Thursday. Abramovich has been sanctioned by the UK government in response to Russia's invasion of Korea. Technology Minister Chris Philp said fans need to remember Abramovich has close ties with Russian President Vladimir Putin, whose regime has committed barbaric acts in Ukraine. Well, he may have, but as I've mentioned before, uh, guilty by association um, is, I mean, we have, we're have we not seeing Roman Abramovich holding a weapon here, are we? Do you know what I mean? And, and you know, pointing it at the Ukraine people. I believe, by the way, um, Roman Abramovich is part Ukraine. And let's not forget that he was approached by uh, uh, really important people from the Ukraine uh, with regards to trying to negotiate peace, which he was. He was the only one uh, only one of significance that actually responded to it. Um, and, you know, it's really quite incredible here about these government ministers, like I said, like the one that brought up the parliamentary privilege, which brought Abramovich into this whole situation. Um, that particular guy listed, um, and I, I posted it up on my Twitter feed, uh, as one of the people that voted to go to war in Iraq, 2003, Tony Blair's government, the same man that was also involved in the um, cash for questions, I believe, and the expense scandal, you know. 
such a moral, perfect individual, you know, someone that will defraud the British people. And, um, you know, but, you know, hey ho, you know, we must get this man, we must cause this upset, we must do everything that we need to do. Let's also forget, of course, that the Labour Party, the same party, yeah, um, receiving um, uh, Russian donor, donor, donors money coming in it's all total and utter hypocrisy it just stinks uh, they're like rats they are all coming out saying the same fucking shit uh, and it says here i would ask them to think very carefully you know before doing that again because the barbaric acts of the putin regime when a bramwich is support is far more important than football well, it is, and you're absolutely right. In fact, Bill Shankly, the good old Scouser, uh, or Scottish Scouser, let's put it that way, um, he said that football was more important than uh, a matter of life and death, and we all know that's not true. And of course, we also know that, you know, that every moment, every situation where Chelsea fans have been asked to give a minute's applause or, um, you know, or even collect money on behalf of the people of Ukraine, um, they've done exactly that, you know. But of course, we can't sing the name of Roman Abramovich, even though the man was 19 years part of our history and gave us some of the greatest memories of our entire lives. But hey ho, we can't say that, can we? we? You know, we have to kind of like go along with this official um, narrative. There is only one way of thinking these days. George Orwell, 19 fucking 84, yeah. And of course, people don't realise because they don't. They 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 literally are dependent on mainstream media, BBC, ITV, Channel Four, uh, Sky News. They don't realise that this war in the Ukraine goes all the way back eight, nine, even ten years ago. And listen, I want to tangle web we weave when we practice to deceive. Let's put it this way. Um, but we won't go on about that. Um, so, okay, so we know that, uh, you know, they're calling us embarrassing for doing that. Daily Mail, Chelsea could go bust. The Could the 900 million night deal be the nail in the Chelsea's coffin? It's almost as if they're reveling in it, isn't it? You know, be fantastic. Oh, oh, Chelsea go bust, come on. Let's add to the fury. Club could go bust in weeks after sanctions on the oligarch owner, Roman Abramovich, left. Blues are able to sell tickets on merchandise with the 40 million shirt deal axed and the staff all being laid off. Abramovich saw his assets frozen, throwing the pending sale of the club into disarray. You know, but I mean, the point is this, yeah, that what do we know here, right? Okay, we know um, that the club can be sold if uh, Abramovich doesn't receive a penny. And of course, what's he actually said? He's actually said, not only is he prepared to write off the £1.5 billion pound debt, he's willing to give the profits of any of anything to do with a sale to the Ukrainian people. I mean, what more do you want this man to do? This is a man that never took furlough from the UK government during the pandemic. It's a man that allowed the hotels of Chelsea Football Club, which belonged to him, remember, um, to, for the NHS to um, use uh, to, to, to sleep there and, uh, uh, you know, free of charge and to eat there for the restaurants and then, of course, the women's refuge and, you know, all the things that, um, that Abramovich done throughout that entire pandemic time. It just makes you fucking sick to, to death. And, of course, you've got all these rats, like, you know, Pierce Morgan, you know, almost loving it, you know, like taking the piss, taking the, gotta, you know, get in there, go and get, to, go and get Thomas Tuchel, you know, get them while they're down, you know, you know, let's, ha, 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 Chelsea, yeah, bam a bitch, how can you Chelsea fans support a man like that? And absolute, well, you know, it's incredible, isn't it? Yeah, because just go back a few years and you'll see on his timeline, he tweeted out, I wish Arsenal had uh, got Abramovich. 2014, hashtag Roman, hashtag Abramovich, hashtag fucking hypocrites. You all are hypocrites. Yeah. Jamie Carragher, do you hear him? Like, you know, Manchester United need to go and get the manager now, you know. What, you know, 
why would he want to go to Manchester, Jamie? Why? You know, what, what, when he when he's living his life in London right now, and why are we going to the wall? Why? Why? What, you know, this apparently right. The club can still be sold, right? Okay, so okay, the, the British government, and that's the thing we should all be worried about right now. The very very fact, like they took all our rights away during the pandemic. Where they can literally do whatever they like, take away all your human rights, and here they are, right, just shutting down a football club, you know, taking away people's um, life, their culture, their almost religion, you, you might say. Um, another one, um, uh, what's his flipping name, Jordan, uh, over at um, Talk Sport, Simon Jordan. Uh, coming out with how it was, it's an absolute tra travesty when then Abramovich absolutely ruined the game. Yeah, really, yeah, really. Well, I seem to remember um, West Ham may have gone bust and Abramovich not coming to the game because guess what? Those purchases for Joey Cole, um, you know, and um, and the, the defender that we bought at the time um, that went on to play with Liverpool. Uh, West Ham would have gone bust had it not been the case, you know. And the guy's been a blessing, an absolute blessing. And, and let's not forget, yeah, before the Premier League was formed, the last one before the Premier League in 1992, for about 10, 15, 20 years prior to that, it was them same clubs, you know, Liverpool, Everton, uh, Man United, uh, and Arsenal, yeah, right, OK, and, and, and Tottenham. Yeah, and they were the ones, they were the breakaway ones. That's what really formed the Premier League. Simon, you know, Glenn Johnson, by the way, has come to mind, the player I was thinking about. Bramovich has been like a breath of fresh air and um, there's so much bollocks being said about us, you know, 10 years apparently we've been, we've been up this, twice 25 fucking years, you know, a quarter of a century, we've been fucking winning trophies, 28 trophies to be exact. And, uh, you know, it just makes you fucking sick to, sick to the core, you know what I mean, listening to, all the, all this hatred and bile and just this, this 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 what's inside people? It's like they're consumed with jealousy and hatred and um, so much fucking saltiness. You know what I mean? And um, I see here right looking for some bigger better news. Nick Candy, who is a Chelsea supporter, been been going to Chelsea since Bridge since under four. He's got a place around the corner from the ground. His family, um, also uh, Chelsea supporters too, and I think it was his dad or his grandfather was asked to play for Chelsea back in the day. But uh, apparently Chelsea asking the government to ease restrictions. Candy still wants to buy the club up. Ten, ten parties are still considering making bids for Chelsea property. But Chelsea property developer Nick Candy is a guy, by the way, whose whole... Um, uh, whole uh, sort of business plan, so to speak, along with the bid, is to redevelop Stamford Bridge. Um, despite the UK government's sanction of the club of the owner, Roman Abramovich, on Thursday, Nick Candy is still pursuing his bid to buy Chelsea. Um, Abramovich has had his assets frozen, blah, blah, blah. And Chelsea are asking the government to ease some of the restrictions imposed on the club to ensure that they can survive. Chelsea are currently not allowed to sell tickets, blah, 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 blah. Um, a quick sale of Chelsea is regarded as being in everyone's interest, including the government's, as there has been no indication that any of the interested parties are having second thoughts about buying the club. So all the doom and fucking gloom that you're hearing, right, is all total and utter bullshit. As I said, we are blue chip uh, uh, company, Chelsea FC, right, we are the real fucking deal, the biggest club in London, the most profitable club in London. Um, Candy, married to Australian pop star and actress Holly Valance, is a Chelsea scene ticket holder and property developer. He's planning attending Sunday's game with Newcastle at Stanford, which live on Sky Sports. Got Sky Sports. We are examining the details of yesterday's announcement and we are still interested in making a bid, Candy's spokesman said. Clearly, this is a time of great uncertainty for all Chelsea fans. In our view, no one is the owner of a football club. You are the custodian of it for the fans and the community. That's right. Um, 
and 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 this is you know who are the potential bidders? Todd Bowley and Hans Org Wiss the consortium. Bowley tried to buy Chelsea a twenty two bit million deal three years ago. He still wants to buy the Premier League club. The LA Dodgers uh, owner, part time owner, has teamed up with Swiss billionaire Wiss. They are likely to pay the three billion asking figure. Mushin Barak, who was very very um, vocal about a beer at Stamford Bridge apparently yesterday. It was hoping for a deal to be done. Uh, the Turkish businessman spokesman, he told Sky Sports that he had submitted an offer to Chelsea, but his claims are not being treated, but his claims are being treated with caution. Well, he's been very, 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 very vocal. Redbird Capital Partners is a US uh, private equity firm who last April paid 533 million an 11% stake in Liverpool owners Fenway Sports Group. Premier League rules would prevent them owning another club. Thomas Ricketts, who spoke about the Ricketts family, chairman of Chicago Cubs, is looking for investment opportunities outside of the US, was part of a consortium that tried to buy AC Milan, which I did say in 2018. Nick Candy, property development, Chelsea support owner. He sounds like a really, really good punt, you know. I mean, a man that's part of a consortium that's definitely got the money, definitely got a precise angle on what an owner should be. I would imagine if he's a season to get older and he's been part of the football club from the age of four to where he is right now, and he's local, then he would see the benefits of not changing anything uh, that doesn't need to be changed. Let's have it right. We are a winning machine. Why would you do that? Um, also, I'd imagine this sort of guy, because he's well known within the the British uh, circles, especially um, on the monarchy side, you know, on the uh, royalty side, and, and obviously through the government, the Conservative government, at that too, uh, that he might be the sort of person that they would probably, you know, sort of sanction as being a good fit, which, you know, let's have it right, he's a supporter, he sees the whole job as being a custodian of a football club, not an owner as such. Someone that takes care, steadies the ship, puts the right money in, sees us going in the right direction. It'll do for me, you know. Um, Conor McGregor, which I've never really thought. Jim Radcliffe, old one there, and Lofty Monsour, or Lufty Monsour, who's an Egyptian businessman at Chelsea, season to get older. And there's also a Saudi media comp, uh, uh, comp sort of like commodity too, um, where they've got various um, uh, operations in Saudi Arabia and United Emirates, Emirates um, uh, and Kuwait, I think it's Kuwait. Um, so there's loads and loads and loads of interesting parties. So, you know, for all you doom and gloomers out there, um, don't get too sad, you know what I mean? We're a winning machine, and let's have it right, okay, let's look at the worst situation here, right? We've got a very, very young side, an extremely good academy, um, the average age of our side's about 21, 22, and a lot of those players that kind of like are coming to the end of their contracts, we're really only probably really looking at Rudiger as the one we'd like to keep. But do you know what, even if we had to suffer that loss, and he went, we've still got you know, Thiago Silva, we've still got, you know, decent centre-halves at the club and players that we can bring back. Um, it's not the end of the fucking world. We've still got an incredible squad, uh, you know, and uh, and a lot of young players that can come back to the fold. Look at the players that we can bring back straight away. You know, uh, the striker at Southampton, the guy at Crystal Palace, you know, there's, there's plenty, right, you know, plenty schmenty. Um, and the most important thing for me, you know, is to keep the same players in place, you know, maybe Maria, you know, and um, Petacek, and more to the point, Thomas Tuchel, who I'll tell you now, has been absolute class, you know, as a, the way, you know, I mean, he's had a really hard time, really, because he's had to answer all the questions, and I think he's been absolutely brilliant, and uh, we need to protect him, Um as soon as we get a new owner in, give him a new contract, just batting him down like for life. You know, he is the one manager that will break the mould of out of all the Chelsea managers. He's the real deal. He really is, you know. And I, I absolutely love him a bit, you know what I mean? But um, just to see if there's anything else. 
today. Um, it was a good day, wasn't it? You know, they were all expecting us, looking for us to lose last night. Um, yeah, potential buyers told, this is three hours ago, yeah, on The Guardian, potential Chelsea buyers told that they can approach the UK government. Well, it's not the end of the world, you know, this might be, you know. Potential Chelsea buyers told they can approach UK government, Nick Candy, as all with among those interesting parties, and owner Roman Bramwick sanction, blah, blah, blah. Billionaires interested in buying Chelsea Football Club have been told to approach the UK government with potential takeover proposals after the sanctioning of its current oligarch owner, Roman Abramovich. Fearing the threat of sanctions, Abramovich 55 has been rushing to sell the club. Blah, blah, blah. On Thursday, the government froze Abramovich's UK assets, including Chelsea FC, and a portfolio of luxury properties, including under 50 million mansion yards from Kensington Palace, West London, and 30 million three-storey penthouse overlooking Stamford Bridge. And I think it's Abramovich's interest to just say, do you know what, I'll work with you, because I'm not interested in the money. He's not, I'm not interested in money. Do whatever you want to do with the money. Hey, I'm going to hand you it over. I want Chelsea to be in the right the right hands. I can't see him not doing that. Do you know what I mean? Uh, let's have a look. Let's have a look. Chris Field, please, again. Chris Field again. The licence conditions were written today. The sale would not be allowed. Field told Sky News. However, <coughs> excuse me, if a buyer emerged, it would be open to that buyer or to that to the football club to approach the government and ask for the conditions to be varied in a way that allows the sale to take place. There you go. To be clear, no proposals would be accepted, which saw the proceeds of any sale ended in an unrestricted bank account owned by Abramovich. Job done. And I'm pretty sure we could even create a third party, as I've discussed in other videos, he can't benefit from the process of any sale. Well, he did say he wasn't interested in that anyway. You know, I do feel that making a big... It's just, I think this is all about, look at us, look what we're doing, you know. Um, okay, Candy, who, with his brother Christian, developed the Luxury One Hyde Park development. Okay, so, you know, uh, on Friday, he said he was considering submitting a bid to buy the club from the government. Oh, we know he's going to the game on... At the weekend on Sunday, Newcastle, we are examining the details of yesterday's announcement and are still interested in making a bid. Um, uh, club executive uh, met government officials on Thursday and are expected to, to continue talks in the coming days. A source in Westminster said the government believes a sale of the club should be possible to arrange with relative ease. There you go. There you fucking go. And again, to the sponsors, you know, keep your fucking nerve. It's not, it's not our fault. It's not supporters' fault. It's not the name of Chelsea Football Club. And by the way, you are benefiting from a club that's getting worldwide exposure. And by the way, they do say that no news is bad news. You know, <laughs> and we're everywhere. Trust me, we're a football club, but we're everywhere, yeah? Um... Rain Group, New York Investment Bank, a brand which appointed to sell the club, told bidders on Thursday that the sale had been paused while the parties consider the implications of development and discuss next steps with the relevant UK authorities, as well as Candy Weir, Spoley and Harris. A number of over, uh, other mostly US-based businesses people are understood to have formed consortiums to consider submitting bids. Fears are mounting that Chelsea could collapse into administration if a sale is not agreed soon. I don't think the government, the British government, would want that. And in any case, if, if that did happen, and people talk about points deduction and everything else, that would be because of the British government. It's not Chelsea's fault. It's not like we've gone into administration and now we're going through the same ramifications of, um, of how it all works. Um, but it's not because of that factor. It's not like another League United situation. Um, the club has been granted a special licence to allow it to continue to play. Uh, for the rest of the season, but only season the goals and fans have bought tickets, and those that have bought tickets will be able to attend matches. Chelsea will only be allowed to make payments essential to the continuation of the operation of the club. Three, the British Telecoms Company, that is the team's principal shirt sponsor, last night suspended its £40 million per, per, uh, any year partnership. And yet we wore the, we wore the kit with three. Um, Hyundai, its shirt sleeve sponsor, with a dual worth reported 10 men said it was assessing the situation. 
Well, it depends on the poison that the mainstream media keep pushing, you know. Because if they keep pushing out there, this is your not a god team. Why would you want to be associated with a Russian team? You know, uh, then, of course, it may be the point where they think, do you know what, this is just, you know. But, of course, we all know that's all bollocks. Um, Chelsea's training kit sponsor, Trivago, said it would continue to support the club. Well, well done, you. The uncertainty over the current ownership situation of Chelsea FC has been challenging. Moving forward, it is important to us to continue supporting the club, the fans and the community, along with the essential work that the Chelsea Foundation does to help those in need. We are looking forward to a transition of ownership as soon as possible and want to support the club in this process. Well, there you go. Don't that make you feel a lot, lot better? I know it does fucking me. As 2022 begins, there's a New Year's resolution we'd like you to consider. Uh, oh, that's all fucking... <laughs> that's, 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 that's the guide you're looking for people to uh, to um, help them out uh, with sponsorship etc so yeah